<clears throat> that's it for Michael additions. There's only one last thing to talk about from chapter 19, and that's the Robinson annulation, the fun part. Because it combines a bunch of things in one. Alright. So I'm going to prove I don't know how to spell his name, but Robinson, you get the idea. Well, however many B's or X's or whatever are in it. The Robinson annulation. The way this works is it involves two separate reactions. One reaction that is a Michael addition, and then following that, an aldol condensation. So, <coughs> let's start with this. And we're going to react that with this. With hydrogen there. In the presence of OH minus. So I'm taking a ketone and I'm reacting it with an alpha beta unsaturated unsaturated ketone, or in this case aldehyde. The first step, deprotonate something because you're in basic conditions. I have two I have three alpha protons, one here, one here, and one here. Now if you remember your orgo one rules, the hydrogens that are directly attached to double bonds are never acidic, so we know this one's out. And between these two, they're exactly the same, so it doesn't matter which one I choose. I'm just going to choose the one on the right. So that OH- minus will come in, grab that proton, and form our enolate like usual business. <coughs> and that gives you an O-, minus, your enolate here, and you still have that alpha, beta, unsaturated aldehyde completely. You know what? I'm going to make it a ketone. Let's make that a CH3. Now it's a ketone, and then I don't have to keep messing up <laughs> what I'm saying. Okay? So now this will swing down, and this is going to go out and attack like any enolate would. Now we have to consider where is it going to attack? We have a couple options. But like I said before, in a Michael, in a Michael reactant, the only things that target the carbonyl are carbons with lithium on them and carbons with MgBr. Since this is an enolate, that's neither of the above, which means it's going to attack here. And then, just like any other microreaction, things are going to swing up. So we're going to have this weird, messy carbon chain looking thing. We have the ring, double bond O, reforming. And the ring was not changed. But now if I number my carbons 1, 2, I'm attacking 3, which is connected to 4, 5, and 6. So I have 1 and 2, 3 and 4 coming off like that, well, 3, 4, 5, and six. Drawing that way for no real reason. Three, four, five, six. <clears throat> and now I have carbon five being an O minus because those electrons swung up. And not just an O minus, but a double bond moved from three to four to four to five. So an enolate, an O minus on a carbon carbon double bond. <clears throat> now this isn't where the reaction ends. Because whenever you get to this step, you do a Robinson annulation, or sorry, whenever you do a Michael addition, we saw before, you make an enolate, and then what does that enolate do? Tautomerize, switch back to its carbonyl form. So let me redraw this so things are pointing up and it's nicer looking. So five, six, and then all minus. So I just redraw this a little nicer. Okay. Then I added a one here. And this will tautomerize. It's going to grab an H plus, having that O minus swing down, and this the one go out to the H plus. And now you have the ring. I'm gonna. I'm afraid I'm moving out of my video boundary, so I'm gonna redraw this up here. Uh, so you have the ring has been changed yet. Okay, you have three, four, five, six, and now the double bond between four and five is gone, and you're back to a C double bond note. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now here's the next step, because this is one key point to make that's kind of important for any of these type of reactions. When you have a base, we started with OH minus, right? OH minus loves to pull off acidic protons, and whenever you have one of these reactions where you do a Michael addition, you're not done as long as there are at least there's at least one carbonyl left. Let me rephrase that. At least two carbonyls left. And I still have two carbonyls left here. 
which means I still have fairly acidic protons floating around. I have alpha protons still. I have the alpha proton on two. I have the alpha proton on this unnumbered carbon. I have the alpha proton on four, and I have the alpha proton on six. All of these are fairly acidic, but only one of them is the best. And it comes down to the matter of which one will make the most stable ring if it were to form the enolate. If I look at this carbon over here, this carbon would have to attack this carbonyl because it's up. The alpha of a carbonyl will not attack that carbonyl it is alpha to, meaning if I make this negative, it's not going to attack that carbonyl, it's too close. It would attack this one. So if I count, I have a one, two, three, four, five, six carbon away carbonyl. So maybe this is good because we know that five and six member of rings are really, really stable. But if I were to have this carbon attack here, I'd kind of be closing the rings in on each other, and that just looks kind of weird. So it's not the most ideal thing because you'll have this steric issue. Basically, you want to avoid having trying to form a ring like that because now you'd have this, this carbonyl sticking out in the middle of the ring you're trying to form. In general, the enolate that you're going to form will be coming off of the carbon chain that you just added in the Michael addition. So one of the alpha protons of the Michael reactant is where you're going to pull off that proton. But let's continue our list and see why that's the case. If I look at the alpha proton on carbon 2, well, again, I can't have it react with this carbonyl, so it has to go to the further one. One, two, three, four. Four member rings are unstable, so I can rule that one out pretty quickly. Now let's look at these alpha protons. This is on, the alpha proton on four is one, two, three, four away from the other carbonyl. Again, no good, a four member ring, that sucks. <coughs> Finally, I have the alpha carbon on six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. This will make a six member ring. And when we put this together, this option will not be stuck in the middle of those two rings like this one was. And again, even if, if you can't visualize that, just rule of thumb, it's generally the carbon chain that you add from the Michael addition that does this second step. Okay, so now that I've ruled out which hydrogen, or ruled which hydrogen is the best to pull off because it makes a six member ring, I'm gonna do that, OH minus. So I'm bringing back that base from before, and he's gonna come in and grab that proton, forming my enolate. And now I have, <coughs> We have the rib. I have the ring that I started with. I have the carbon chain. And now I have an enolate. And just like any other enolate would, this is going to swing down and this is going to attack something. What does it attack? The other carbonyl. And this swings up. Okay? So now let's count. We have carbon one, two, I'm changing the numbering from there, but I'm numbering it to count for the ring I'm forming. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this right here is basically what we did before with the aldol reaction, right? We have an enolate attacking another carbonyl. It's not a pleasant because these aren't esters. <coughs> so now, what am I going to look like? Well, this ring was completely untouched, so I'm just going to redraw that exactly the same. And now we know that five and six were part of the ring that I'm forming, and they're going to be the bridge heads, right? I saw that I'm forming a one, two, three, four, five, six member ring, so I just need to draw a six member ring where six and five are part of that ring. So I have one, let's say this is five was connected to four, six is being connected to one, one is connected to two, four is connected to three, and three is connected to two. Okay, now I just have to fill in the blanks. Carbon two had a carbonyl that reformed, so that should be a C double bond O over there. Carbon six was the, o the oxygen that got attacked, which means now it's going to be O minus. And now we can check to make sure this is the right product because we said before in the aldol condensation, you always have that one, two, three setup. Carbonyl on one, alpha carbon on two, OH carbon on three. Well, it's not an OH yet, but we know what happens to O minuses when there's no good leaving group attached. They go out and grab a proton. So some proton floating around, maybe some water from this deprotonation because this became water when it grabbed that hydrogen. And O minus grabs that proton. C 
six member ring that or five member ring that you started with, the six member ring that you formed, and an OH here, and a C double bond O here. Now, how do we know if we're going to do the condensation reaction, right? We have that, that one, two, three setup where carbon on one, alpha on two, OH on three. Do we have heat? Did I say heat? In general, Robinson annulations typically end with a condensation regardless of whether we say heat or not. But we will always be clear. There are a couple ways we can point it out. If you see a molecular formula where you have carbons and hydrogens, whatever number they are, but you see at the end you have O1, not O2 or O3, just one singular oxygen, then you know you had to condense because here I have two, here I have one less. That's your most common hint for both aldols or for Robinsons. And if they tell you heat, well, that's even more justification. Yes, I'm definitely going to be doing the condensation if I see heat. So that said, what am I going to form? Well, we said before, the double bond forms between two and three and the OH leaves. How does that happen? Your base that you had at the start, OH minus, comes in, grabs the alpha proton that is on two, and that swings down to kick the OH out. And so you'd be left with this as your final product. A double bond O, and the five member ring you started with, and now a double bond there. That would be the final product of this Robinson annulation, which started out with. <coughs> which started from these two pieces here. A five-member ring that had a ketone, and your typical alpha-beta unsaturated ketone. Okay? These two, plus a little OH minus and heat, made magic happen. Now there's one really important point I want you to take away from this, and that's the fact that this reaction ends with six-membered rings. If you look at this, I have a one, two, three, four, five, six-member ring. That wasn't there originally, right? I had a five and then a carbon chain, but Robinson annulations will always have a final product that has at least one six-member ring in it. 